there is no competition Oops. like this. Hi, this is Tony Prince welcoming you to a display of turntablist talent which spans 15 years. Before we begin, I think it'd be a good idea if you join Cutmaster Swift and Cubert in Italy, where you'll learn a few basic DJ skills. Q, how about just telling everyone all these styles you guys keep creating? Because, you know, there's a new one every, every, every six months, isn't it? Yeah, there's, there's different things. There's like chirps, there's crabs, there's flares, there's a... Tears or swirls, or and you can combine all that stuff. How about you demonstrating these sounds and just do you, do you want to see him demonstrate these sounds and actually know what they are? You know, because I mean, if you're gonna do it, you need to know what you're actually do, what it's called, innit? You know what I mean? So let's get this right. All right, what are we gonna go with first, Q? Uh, okay, let's. <laughs> we could put this on a learning video. By the way, to start off, uh, actually, Q's using Cutmaster Swift's Battle Break. I didn't say that, did I? Very compulsory. What are we doing now? These are chirps. Oh shit. Chirps. What's next? Uh, these are uh, flares. Like this is a, a one-click flare. Uh, a two-click flare. These are uh, crabs. Yeah. So if anyone out there says they've got crabs, you know. You know what he means now, yeah? And these are uh, tears. Yeah. There's a lot. Uh, combine uh, tears with uh, crabs. Uh, fading stuff. Just whatever. It's a musical instrument, you know. Just... He's a musician for true. A turntablist. Remember that. Yeah. The DMC Championships began in 1985. It was a UK-only event won by Roger Johnson. In 1986, DJ Cheese from the USA won the first world title. The event launched at London's Hippodrome and moved very quickly to the 7,000 capacity Royal Albert Hall, seen here in 1987. We've come a long way since then, as you're about to see. The DJ Cheese performance, sadly, was not recorded that year, which is a shame because DJ Cheese was the first DJ to introduce scratching to the event. This video, however, will provide a complete history of turntable artistry, the wild tricks, the musicians, the brilliance of wannabe world champions. Check out the DJ artistry now, and here's Cutmaster Swift to talk you through various aspects. Thanks a lot, Tony. Let's start with Mike Platinus from Spain, and as you can see, he's using more than just his hands. <laughs> it's a good job he didn't have a cold, Johnny. <laughs> Here's the French champion, D Nasty, performing a quite complicated scratch there, and one hand cutbacks. Pretty impressive, D. Now, here's an interesting character. The year before, in 86, he was beat by Cheese into third place, Orlando Vaughan from Holland. He cried out in the event, is this a mixing competition or a scratching competition? He was furious that Cheese had won on scratching ability. So this year, he's back with vengeance on his mind. And what is he doing? He's scratching. Don't even try it. Don't even try it. That's an interesting gadget there. This trick that actually Vaughn's actually performing was actually pioneered by a great scratch master known as Grandmaster Flash. He used to do it back in the days. Let's see how Vaughn performs it. Yeah, 
Yeah, he said to the other DJs, I can beat you with my hands tied. Orlando Vaughan, a great guy and a great competitor. This is Chris Christar from Belgium. And in them days, again, the tricks were fairly basic, so a lot of DJs had various ideas how to impress the crowd, and Chris here is using quite a few gimmicks. And this was long before MC Hammer came on the scene, folks. This is taking scratching to its oomph degree, isn't it, Johnny? a bit of a nut on our hands here, do you? <laughs> well, I always put DJing down to three categories. One, the music. Two, the entertainment. And three, the showmanship. Yeah, but should he have a helper like this? <laughs> <laughs> This is the US champion at that time, Joe Rodriguez. And Joe's going to demonstrate some more scratching What's he doing here, Johnny? He's actually reversing the record manually, and um, he's doing a very, very accurate job of it, too. This was very far ahead of its time for the day, wasn't it, 87? Certainly was. This is all pioneering stuff. We've got to remember we're actually seeing. We move on to Denmark's champion, Ken Larsen. The Danish are very famous for introducing the no headphone system of queuing. Um, we'll talk more about that a bit later, but let Ken demonstrate his tricks. That is a very difficult trick to pull off, to be at that angle and actually not seeing your cue points accurately and the, probably the pain it's causing you. Ken, I've got to give it to you. You're an athlete, <laughs> as well as a great DJ. Well, now, here's Chad Jackson, the eventual winner this year at the Royal Albert Hall, complete with a hat he, to this day, hates. Wished he'd never wore it, but he did, and this was what was going on in 87. I've got to tell you a funny story, Johnny. You know, he'd won the UK Championship, and we wanted him to win for Britain, obviously. Um, although we always want the best man to win, but he was a Brit, and we wanted him to win. And he told us he had a trick lined up, and the trick involved a magician friend of his, who gave him a trick. He didn't actually give it to him. He charged Chad a thousand pounds for this trick. And what was supposed to happen was there was a nylon thread that nobody could see. And at the end of his set, when Chad finishes, the record was going to be pointed at by Chad and lift off the turntable and move across the head of the audiences off into a box in the distance. That was going to be like a levitational kind of trick that would have blown everyone's mind. I think it would have been the greatest DJ trick of all time if it had worked but something went wrong. Somebody actually sabotaged the trick. Uh, at the end of the evening, we found out that there was... Um, the nylon thread had a, a blob on the end of it indicating that it had been burnt through. But at this point, Chad still thinks he's going to end with the levitation act. And we, at the side of the stage, have found out that the nylon thread is broken. Somehow, I've got to get a message to this kid that his trick isn't going to work and he's got to change the end of his act. So I now crawl across the stage on my hands. And I'm, I'm the MC, of course. And I crawl across on my hands and knees so the audience can't see me. And I'm saying, Chad, Chad, trying to catch his attention. No trick, no trick. It's finished, it's not working. So he's getting 
getting on with all these other things. In a little while after he's finished with all the uh, the props, the, the billiard cues and everything, you watch his face as he looks down at the deck, and you'll see him look beyond the deck. When he looks beyond the deck, he's looking at me, and I'm yelling, no trick, no trick, it's not going to work. Don't do the levitation. It's a very exciting moment, but how he ended it up was totally ad-lib. Now watch his face now. Now, he's looking at me. You see him looking beyond the turntable? It's me on my forward hands and knees. And now I've gone away, and he knows that his trick's not... But what am I going to do? Now his, his brain is saying, what am I... How am I going to end this? So everything from this point onwards was totally ad-libbed, and his actual physical ending with the ball was a phenomenal piece of uh, theatre. It was brilliant. Well, at the end of the day, he proved, he proved what a true champion can do, which is turn things around even when they are going wrong, you know? Well, they didn't go wrong that night. He won the World Championship for England, and we were very proud of him. It was a great performance in the day. drama from Chad Jackson, whose career has Chad been formidable Jackson. because shortly after his championship reign, uh, he concentrated on becoming a record producer, uh, had a massive hit with Hear the Drummer Get Wicked, Top of the Pops, everything, he had a massive success, and even today he's still making albums. Uh, fabulous. Now, Johnny. We move on to the 1988 World Finals, and this is Kari Vesela from Finland demonstrating a trick that Ch Chad had performed earlier on. No crossfader, no mixer, just one hand in the air. He's still keeping the rhythm going. This is a legend in the turntableist world of, of DJ scratch mixing. This is Cash Money, and Cash is one of the pioneers for chirps, um, transforming, and pretty well everything, really. Pretty, I mean, in yeah. the day, this was the most stunning thing we'd ever seen. We, where were you when, when he was doing this, Johnny? I was actually on the... I had the pleasure of being in the competition that year and being on stage, and it was so nerve-wracking, not just being in the Albert Hall, but being up against a legend. I think it's one of the few times in the World Championships where every competitor was quite satisfied with the result. No, no doubt. I mean, the sheer speed of the guy and the... The, the energy he gave from those turntables was just phenomenal at that time. Yeah. Most of the tricks you're going to see further on in the video all come from this event at that time. Yeah, a major influence. Cash money. DJ Soul Shock in 1989, and um, he's a Danish DJ. Uh, 
Again, no headphones and performing tricks. And isn't that Mick Hansen helping him? Yes, Mick was the defending world champion that year because Cash decided not to defend. And you may have noticed that the set has actually got a lot smaller. Um, again, Cash Money was one of the influences on that, you know. It got more compact. Everybody seemed to like using the foot in the, in the day. It was a phenomenal trick on um, um, uh, just a case of I could do that, but this is how I'm going to do it. Mm. Everybody had to try and find their own original slant on a trick. Yeah. This is Keys 1 from Switzerland, and he's demonstrating cutbacks obviously, but variating his tricks again. Elliot Ness here now, isn't it? That's right, from Finland, fin Finland champion. Like I said, all of a sudden, tricks was 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 the style. You, it wasn't just enough to scratch. You had to do, be doing a trick. You had to be taking that crowd to another level. This is Cutmaster G from Italy, and he's doing something a bit different here. He's turned the mix over upside down, which is actually pioneered from a, a well-known UK DJ. DJ Pogo. Well, if you note at the stage he's standing on, he's actually standing on a giant SL1200 turntable, which we had built for this event. Is that famous hook? Let's just qualify, Johnny, what tricks are all about. Tricks, really, are putting yourself into a predicament where it's going to be more difficult to retain your rhythm and keep your music flowing, isn't it? I certainly agree with that, Tony. That's the best description of it. I mean, after all, these guys have been practicing all year for a major event like this, mm. and a trick is just a way of saying I'm so masterful at what I'm doing. I can still be musical even though my hands are behind my back. That's a very difficult trick there to perform. That's um, pausing the record as well as using his feet. Here's another unique trick there, cutting back with your foot and sitting down like that. Here's a very popular champion at that time from the USA. This is DJ Aladdin, and I believe he was about 17 years old at that time as well. He was from LA. Yeah, he was flying the flag for the West Coast all right, Johnny. I mean, he, you know, the kids on the West Coast thought that New York had it all their own way with uh, turntablism, but he wanted to put the record straight. He came over here, but he ran into this guy. <laughs> he looks familiar, very familiar. In this actual event, I pioneered a technique called the copycat, and basically it was like an echo repeat word of the turntable and what I was actually doing was pausing the, the vinyl and actually repeating the word over and over. It was like a forward cutback. That's a bit of a flutter going on there, by the way, Johnny. I think you pioneered something else there without knowing it. Well, that's what the competition's about, Tony. It's about seeing something and getting an idea and moving on from it. And building on that. Certainly. Yeah. Again, I'm copycatting and doing tricks with it, showing how masterful I am with it. Is that why they call you Cut Master? Yeah. <laughs> I would never do that with a fader. You don't know where it's been. Some of these guys use the most outrageous parts of the body to use, to move the fader, and there's you with your mouth. Well, fortunately for me, that was actually my mixer, so I do know where it's been. <laughs> <laughs> now then, who have we got here? Like I said before, this is the defending champion. Um, Mick Hansen. Mick Hansen, that's right. And Mick here is... Obviously demonstrating tricks. Now, Mick was from Denmark, yeah? Yes. And he was in the competition of ooh, two or three years, I believe. Um, wow. He was a great guy. He was the first one to throw his headphones away, wasn't he? That's right. It, on, in the event, I mean, you know. 
and start using sticky tape on the records and things like that. Yep, that's something that we all catched on to from the Danish. Yeah, and it, it's still a fundamental part now, isn't it? Instead of headphones using the sticky tape to put your mark on. Now, here's a guy who can't really use sticky tape too well. Other people have to put it on for him, because believe it or not, if you think, like, you know, it's difficult doing a mix, try doing it when you're blind. This is Big K from Norway. Well, we'd all have loved him to win, you know, but the competition is based on, you know, what goes on the turntables, but it was wonderful to see him. He was in the event twice with the blind kid. Now he is a familiar-looking face, you might think. Uh, he's the brother of Orlando Vaughan, yes? Yeah, it's DCS from Holland performing Chasing, otherwise known as Copycat. And here's one of your adversaries, Reckless, the Reckless Boy. That's right. He followed on from my footsteps, being the UK champion. And again, he's using various trick techniques without a mixer here, actually. I call that the merry-go-round. It's very good. <laughs> He was very confident, Johnny, always very confident. That's very important in this event, isn't it? To be confident, to look your audience in the eye and to say, I'm here to win. No doubt, Tony. Everybody wants to see somebody who actually looks like they know what they are doing up there. And that's what the championships is all about, is to show and show and prove, as we say. Here's Elliot Ness, still using body tricks, still a big part of the event. Later, as the video progresses, you'll see it becomes a very much more musical event in these days, Johnny, isn't it? Yeah, that's the whole idea of the name turntablist. Like a pianist, now the DJ is actually not just playing records on the turntables, he's making music on the turntables. But I'm, I'm still a big fan of the tricks, Johnny. I just uh, adore looking at people doing great mixes under duress. You know, that's what tricks are all about. Look at this guy. We move on to the US champion, and this is Baby G. Do Let's that see that again. Do that again. That <laughs> must have been painful. Here's another one of those back, uh, what would you call this? Back breakers. A back break. <laughs> This just shows how much dedication and time that these guys actually must put into these sets and the ideas they come out. Here is the Italian champion, Francesca Zappala. And one thing about the Italians, they are very fast stallions. Francesca's a legend in Italy, he really is a great DJ, and as you say, Johnny, the Italians, they like that furious style, don't they? They don't like hanging around. Certainly don't. Oh, he thought it would be a walk over this competition. That was a quite a unique trick at that time. It certainly was. Everything about him is confident. I think his feeder likes him as well, Johnny. <laughs> More support. So we're getting into speed now as the competition grows in maturity. 
and speed becomes a very uh, big part in the event, doesn't it? It certainly did that year, as you shall see from the next contestant. This is the German champion, DJ David. Talking about legends. Soon it wasn't just enough to be, as you can see here, it just be going fast. It, you had to play the records fast as well. Not the first time we've seen a foot on a 12 inch. <laughs> now, the foreign uh, viewers will not understand what a foot is. It's 12 inches long in old terms, measurement in Britain. <laughs> that was supposed to be a joke. This guy, DJ David, was always looking to push the envelope of DJing to the very limit, always looking for new things to do. Eventually, of course, as you'll see on the video, he comes up with the ultimate DJ trick. But here's my ultimate buddy once again. What, what are you doing here this year? I'm actually defending the t title. I was the first world champion to actually say, yes, what the heck, I'm going to defend it. A very brave thing to do. Most people who won the title thought, OK, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead, keep the title. Nobody can ever say I was beat. You were the first guy to come out and say, OK, come and take it. And uh, as you found out, it's not that easy, John, is it? It certainly isn't, Tony. Here we have Elliot Ness again in the competition. That could be quite painful if you don't do it very correctly. Well now, I think we've done enough talking, Johnny. Thank you for talking us through some of these. We'll, we'll have a chat later when it's necessary, but right now, let's just get on with the video and watch the stars of the past in the DMC Technics World DJ Championships. Take, 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 take